The case I'd like to share is an elderly patient who had aspiration pneumonia with comorbidities. Pneumonia in elderly adults can often be serious and progress quickly. In the chest x-ray image, we saw pneumonia in the right upper and lower lobes, and she was experiencing fever upon her hospitalization in the ICU. On the first day in ICU, we routinely conducted sputum gram stain and bacterial culture. The results showed gram-positive cocci and normal flora. Although the nasal swab screening reported MRSA, it was often disregarded in clinical practice because screening result might be inaccurate, so the patient was given piperacillin tazobactam therapy in the ICU. However, after three days of treatment, her symptoms were not relieved. The patient was still experiencing fever on day four. Therefore, we conducted bronchoscopy to collect bronchial alveolar lavage specimen for multiplex PCR testing. At our hospital, the laboratory workflow is optimized to deliver the same-day results of pneumonia panel. The test results of rapid multiplex PCR testing are presented in this table. To our surprise, we saw that she was actually infected by Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Staphylococcus aureus. The AMR genes of MRSA were also detected, indicating that the empiric treatment of piperacillin tazobactam was not optimal. So, on day four, we added tycoplanin into the treatment. The takeaway from this case was, if the pneumonia panel had been ordered on day one in the ICU, we could have added tycoplanin for her MRSA pneumonia already on the first day, instead of using piperacillin tazobactam only. The second case, I believe, is a frequently encountered clinical case at medical centers. This was a 60-year-old male inpatient hospitalized in the ward of hematology and oncology department. He was diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma with severe bone marrow invasion. The oncologist treated him with steroids because the patient was a heavy smoker and had occasional wheezes. So steroids were given as the therapy for bronchial spasms as well as an early treatment for his lymphoma. However, the patient presented shortness of breath immediately after the steroids were administered. His chest x-ray image indicated a very severe condition with a clinical diagnosis of ARDS. His white blood cells were reported at a very low level of 1350, and based on the severe findings indicated by chest x-ray, the oncologist had administered all these antimicrobials before the patient was transferred to the ICU, including piperacillin tazobactam, ciprofloxacin, SMX TMP, mycofungin, and ginseclovir. These antimicrobials are commonly used in the Department of Hematology and Oncology. We often see the oncologists prescribe five to six antibiotics as soon as their patients were hospitalized. But in the ICU, we think that the treatment strategy should be more pathogen targeted. Moreover, administering so many intravenous antimicrobials to patients, he might suffer from severe edema. Therefore, in the next morning after the patient was transferred to ICU, we collected the bronchoalveolar lavage for film array testing. The table here summarizes the test results of multiplex PCR. As the report showed, these key bacteria of our concern were not detected, nor was MRSA or other AMR genes. Instead, the case was actually an RSV infection. Additionally, we should note that the pneumonia panel did not include pneumocystis urovecci, so I ordered another single PCR testing. The PCR result of pneumocystis urovecci was negative. Given the high negative predictive values of pneumonia panel, as well as a very low level of procalcitonin, we ruled out bacterial infections. After discussing with his oncologist, we discontinued most of the antimicrobials. Only the piperacillin tazobactam therapy was kept for the treatment of this kind of fever with low white blood cell counts. By stopping the majority of unnecessary antibiotics, providing supportive treatment and some steroids, a significant improvement was observed in his chest x-ray image. On the left, this is the image when the patient was transferred to ICU with intubation. His fraction of inspired oxygen was 100%. PF ratio was 108. He was diagnosed with a moderate to severe ARDS. We discontinued most of the antimicrobials on day two, which lessened the liquid administered via the intravenous therapy. With the appropriate treatment on day six, the patient had significant improvement as shown in the chest X-ray. And then extubation was performed successfully. In the past, for patients with similar conditions like this man, 
we would empirically give many antimicrobials, resulting in prolonged time to optimize or de-escalate the treatment after seven days of ICU stay. The impact of pneumonia panel on this case is that the most personalized treatment was given on day two, so that the patient was successfully extubated on day six, transferred out of the ICU soon afterwards. The patient was prevented from having edema in the hands and legs caused by inactive intravenous antimicrobials. We also avoided the damage of renal function that many antivirals may incur.